Welcome back everyone to Planet Linux, it's been a while. Recently I've been thinking a lot about beginner-friendly Linux distros, and so many of them all do the basic things that you expect, like providing an easy-to-use interface and giving access to any graphical apps that users might need, but that's where a lot of them really seem to stop, and that's left a gap or a sort of disparity of a specific set of things that would be useful for new Linux users to have, but none of these distros actually do. Or rather, they all have the same issues that make Linux unappealing for new users. But recently I've been looking through the latest release of Zorin OS, specifically Zorin 16.2, and I think it adds some very integral features that might not only make Zorin OS the most compelling Linux distro for newer users, but also the most complete and fully functional out-of-the-box experience for almost any Linux user. So let's take a look at exactly how it achieves this. There are a few distinct versions of Zorin OS with slight differences. Uh, the Ultimate Edition comes with a bevy of pre-installed apps and extra desktop layout options and wallpapers. Uh, if you want to support the project, buying this is a great way to do that. However, the core edition is the free, well, core version that still includes all the features in Zorin OS, minus the additional wallpapers and desktop layouts, but you can still install any apps that you'll need from the software center. This is what we'll be using today, and likely what you'll want to start with. Finally, there's a Zorin OS Lite edition, which is designed to run well on old or low-spec computers. And while it does do a great job of this, being quite lightweight, uh, it does miss out on a few of the key features that make Zorin OS so great, so I would only recommend using this if you are using lower or uh, rather older or lower end hardware. But with all that out of the way, we actually see one of the things Zorin OS does so well immediately upon first boot after installation. Zorin OS is an incredibly helpful welcome experience. Now, I know that plenty of distros have welcome screens, but so many of them are just a pile of links or buttons to the various settings, features, and documentation. Zorin, on the other hand, provides a really clean slideshow sort of experience that manages to walk through each of the essentials in a manner that's both streamlined and easy to understand. You can easily explore any of the steps that it covers in more detail, or you can move past each one that you don't care about, and it includes a couple things that you might not expect at first, such as documentation all about the different types of app packages that you may encounter and how to install them. The mini Linux app formats can be quite a confusing concept for both new and, frankly, many existing Linux users and having a quick look through this recommended info can at least help users to get familiar with these concepts. The welcome experience also lets you view their incredibly clean support website where new users can read about any features that they might be interested in using. Once we pass the welcome experience, we're greeted with the clean and familiar Zorin desktop. On the surface, it looks the same as you'd come to expect, but there have actually been a lot of refinements in Zorin 16.2. For starters, there's a new item in the menu called Windows App Support. Selecting this takes you directly to the installation page for Wine, which is the backend that's used to run many Windows programs on Linux. Now, having this option in the menu makes it really simple to enable Windows App functionality if a user knows that they'll want it. Of course, this is in addition to being able to simply run a downloaded Windows executable file where it will prompt you to install Windows App Support automatically. Once it's installed, this menu option is replaced with a folder for any Windows apps that you install, which, as you can see here, is quite straightforward for any app that's compatible with Wine. Three Pinball Space Cadet, as you see here, is certainly quite the classic, and one that I haven't played in quite some time. And it runs perfectly on here, albeit a bit small due to the high resolution display on this laptop. Also new in this regard is if you attempt to download a Windows program that has a better alternative available on Linux, it'll automatically recommend the native Linux app instead. 
One example of this is if you attempt to install the Epic Games Launcher Windows application, in which case it'll prompt you to use the Linux native Heroic Launcher instead. This functionality exists for a growing selection of Windows and Linux app combinations and is really great to see. So although you can install Wine to run Windows apps on most distros, few of them make it this seamless to install and start using Windows apps almost as if they were native Linux applications, which is something that both new and returning Linux users looking to run Windows apps can appreciate. Turning to productivity tasks, Zorin really sticks out above the rest here as well. A frequent problem on Linux is that when opening Microsoft Office files in LibreOffice or similar applications, document formats often get completely messed up. And while we're often quick to blame LibreOffice for poor compatibility, this issue is often actually related with the fonts. The open source fonts that are typically used when replacing Microsoft's proprietary ones don't have the same spacing and scaling, causing a huge mess as you can see here. What Zorin OS 16.2 has done is chose a curated selection of open source fonts that are metric compatible with the equivalent Microsoft ones, ensuring that there's congruent spacing when converting files. This results in near perfect spacing like you can see here. This font wizardry is done automatically for the most commonly used fonts, including Arial, Calibri, Cambria, Courier New, Georgia, Segwa UI, Times New Roman, and of course, everybody's favorite, Comic Sans. And while it may theoretically be possible to achieve this on other distros by manually installing the necessary fonts and configuring all this conversion, uh, Zorin is ensuring that documents look as accurate as possible right out of the box, regardless of where they come from, which is frankly how it should be, and something that other distro maintainers should definitely take note of. On a similar note, Zorin 16.2 also includes the latest LibreOffice version, 7.4, which provides better change tracking for collaboration in Writer, and general performance boosts when opening, navigating, and exporting documents. Zorin 16.2 also sees some improvements to the Zorin Connect app, which lets you seamlessly integrate your computer and smartphone with features like clipboard sharing, notifications, remote keyboard and mouse, among others. In addition to being able to see your phone's battery level from your computer, you can now see your laptop's battery level from the app on your phone. To start using Zorin Connect, just download its app onto your Android phone. Although there isn't an iOS version at this time, iPhone users can download the KDE Connect app, which seems to work perfectly here in Zorin, as Zorin Connect is essentially a fork of the KDE Connect application. If you're interested in a dedicated video covering Zorin slash KDE slash GS Connect, uh, let me know in the comments, I'd be more than happy to do that. Zorin OS has long been focused on providing a familiar and easy to use out of the box experience, and the features it provides, like Zorin Appearance that let you change the desktop layout to something you're most familiar with, had already made Zorin as good as any other beginner friendly Linux distro, if not even better. But I really feel that version 16.2 here finally takes things above and beyond what most distros do, and actually solves problems that plague most Linux systems and removes barriers of entry into Linux for newer users. And at least for now, I truly think this makes for the most user-friendly and ready-to-use Linux distribution and overall Linux experience, at least until other distros are able to catch up and start doing more of these things as well. And considering the active development that Zorin OS is under, ensuring constant improvements and new features, as well as its growing and dedicated community, it really is the perfect solution for essentially any Linux user. But as a quick aside, as we approach 1000 subscribers, I not only want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support of this content, but I also want to offer a little something in return. I would love to hear any Linux questions that you may have, whether it's looking for a specific distro or software recommendation, or if there's a problem that you're facing. I'll be compiling as many of the questions as possible and provide answers and solutions to them in an upcoming Q&A sort of video, so feel free to ask away in the comments section. 
I thank all of you so much for continuing to support this content and for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you next time on Planet Linux.